Today, the Tennessee Three were at the White House. They were the White House Three today. State Representative Justin Jones, Gloria Johnson, and Justin J. Pearson got the VIP treatment from President Biden. And if you're standing up for our kids, you're standing up for our communities, safe communities, and democratic values. That's what it's all about. And all, all three of you speak so well about why you're doing what you did and why you continue to do it. And look, uh, what the Republican legislature did was shocking, it was undemocratic, and it was um, without any precedent. But you turn it around very quickly. Their visit with the president and with VP Kamala Harris comes just days after the Tennessee legislature ended a session filled with undemocratic assaults on drag performances, Democratic members, and the Nashville Metro Council, which state Republican lawmakers wanted to punish because they blocked the 2024 Republican National Convention from coming to the Music City. The session was objectively a failure because a federal judge has temporarily blocked the bill limiting drag performances, calling it unconstitutionally vague while a three-judge state panel blocked Tennessee from immediately enforcing the Nashville Metro Council law, which would have cut the number of council members in half until at least the next election cycle. In the wake of the Covenant School shooting, Governor Bill Lee did successfully push $140 million for school resource officers for public schools. But Republicans failed to pass any meaningful gun measures. Since the shooting, thousands of people have descended on the state capitol to lobby lawmakers, while families connected to the shooting sat in committee meetings and in the galleries calling for gun reform. Their calls fell on deaf ears. Instead of listening to the public, Republicans, who have a supermajority in the legislature, plowed ahead with the unprecedented expulsion of two black Democratic members who listened to the people and demanded action a testament to Tennessee being the least Democratic state in the country. The Republican stubborn insistence on punishing dissent dominated the final days of the session and created a national embarrassment for the Republican Party. And joining me now are the Tennessee Three. Tennessee State Representatives Justin J. Pearson, Justin Jones, and Gloria Johnson. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having and, us. And I'll, I'll just tell you, it was an honor just to meet you all in person. We've been covering this story from day one because of the unprecedented nature of what happened to you. But before I get to that, I do want to ask each of you, and I'm going to start with you, Representative Pearson, mm -hmm. the White House today. Mm -hmm. Meaning for you of being there, um, and what do you think you got from it, and what did you hear from the president mm -hmm. and vice president? You know, it was a very meaningful day for myself, District 86, and the people I'm fortunate and we're fortunate to represent, uh, to go into a place built by formerly enslaved African-American folks, uh, speaking about the voices of the marginalized and those who are being too often excluded in situations like the one where we're in, dealing with the issue of gun violence, the need for gun control, and the need for gun reforms. And so today, hearing from uh, the president and the vice president about the reality that this issue cuts across uh, uh, party lines, that mm -hmm. it isn't just a Democratic or Republican issue. It is a moral issue about whether or not we're going to care about kids, where we're going to care, whether we're going to care about communities, and whether we're going to have the courage to do the things necessary to create the change we need to see. Uh, and to be inspired and motivated and engaged in that way was really helpful and important. Uh, but it also is... Uh, making me commit myself further uh, to this movement, mm -hmm. because it is the voices of thousands of people in Tennessee and across the country that are waking up a, a, a resurrection of sorts with renewal toward the mission that we can end gun violence. We can prevent a lot of the murders and the tragedies that we are seeing. And even in a place like Tennessee, which has for too long not been invested in nationally, for too long has been said, this isn't a place of opportunity. This isn't a place of progress. Uh, even in a place like Tennessee, we are seeing that hope being resurrected to, Amen. to change. But see, his, you know he's a preacher's son because he's just preaching it. Let, let me uh, let me go to you, uh, Representative Johnson. Um, you were a teacher. Yes. And so yes. I know that the this this issue resonates with you in the way it resonates with me in, yeah. as a teacher and a mom, right? Yes. Um, the president's wife is a teacher. Yeah. And I, I'm sure that he talked to you about that. What was yes. your conversation like with the president and the well, vice president? Well, you know, just wonderful because he really does understand that per per perspective. And, you know, Dr. Biden came to Nashville after the shooting. She was there. And so we appreciated that so much that they were paying attention to what's happening in Tennessee. Tennessee sometimes feels left out. Yeah. But as an educator, just knowing, you know, 
all of us are going through these drills. You know, teachers are actually doing drills to keep kids safe. Yep. And the idea of that, I grew up in a time when that was not a concern. Yeah. But but these guys are growing up in a generation that that's been the reality their whole life. And they were also recognizing the National Teacher of the Year today mm -hmm. at the White House. So that was kind of cool. Um, but it's just critical. If you, I've been at a, at a school that had a shooting. When that happened, we lost a student. Yeah. And you will never forget the terror on those kids' faces, the tears and just the shock and trauma that, that everyone collectively had that day and how it continues on. Yeah. So it's important to have a president and a vice president that understands mm -hmm. that so well. Yeah. And, and Kamala Harris really understands movements. You know, we talk a lot about how do you keep the movement going? And we talked about that with President Biden and they just really get it. And it's so nice to have a White House that understands that. And Representative Jones, I mean, right. The two of you are my, my kids age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they grew up having these active shooter drills, and they were traumatizing for my kids. They were traumatizing for me as a mom when they said, you're going to meet at this park, and this is where you will find out if your child is alive or dead. For me, I still can't get over that. And my kids, you know, you guys are their age. So for you, what was the meaning of being there today? And, th and how do we keep this movement going? Because you all have definitely sparked an international movement. Definitely. I think, I mean, the biggest message leaving this meeting with the White House and that we stress was that this is not a moment, it is a movement. And, and it's, it's happening in the South, in a place where we have an NRA-endorsed governor calling a special session a month from now around gun violence. And it's because of this multiracial, multigenerational, multi-faith statewide movement that's really creating this coalition of conscience to force actions and shift political priorities. Um, and so that, that's what gave me hope from our meeting at the White House today. And, and I know I stress, you know, that it's so important that we do something outside of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, when John Lewis let us sit in on the floor of Congress in 2016, it was out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. When we went to the well of the ha Tennessee House with a megaphone and a sign that said, protect kids, not guns, it was out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to get action, um, and if this will be our Selma moment, we're going to have to do something outside of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, and I really believe that Tennessee can set a model for the rest of the nation, that if we can pass these common sense gun laws in the nation, I mean, excuse me, in Tennessee, yeah. that the mass, vast majority of Tennesseans from Republicans Republicans, the independents, the Democrats support, it will set a model for the nation to pass these laws. I think it's important that you mention the South because, you know, I have a, 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 a thing that annoys me about the Democratic Party is that they kind of look at the South and they go, well, that's the Republicans' territory, when it used to be the Democrats' base, right? It, it was a different kind of Democrat, you know? <laughs> but it, it, it is a place where there are a lot of black folks mm -hmm. and where half of black folks still live and where gun violence is actually at a higher rate, you know, occurs at a higher rate, a more death. What do you, what do you, were you all able to say to President Biden? Biden about that, about whether the Democratic Party needs to go back and refocus on the South. Yeah, you know, one of the things we have to realize that even in this uh, moment of uh, Representative Jones and myself being reinstated, which is a moment of triumph, we remember the tragedy, mm -hmm. right, of the Nashville Covenant shooting, the six people who lost their lives. We remember that in our communities, we've had constituents and, and family members, like I've had Larry Thorne, my own classmate, who died this year because of gun violence. We remember that there has been a, a, a tragedy uh, that has precipitated the need for this conversation because there's an epidemic of gun violence that's happening because of the proliferation of guns that are in communities because of the lack of courage and will of people in positions of power to do right by the people.